Welcome back to Lobby Concessionals, the movie podcast where nobody's right and everybody's wrong. I'm Parker and that's Brendan. Like and subscribe, follow us along. We're putting out stuff twice a week. So yeah, um, we're doing our bi-weekly movies, current events episode today. Uh, the uh, We're calling it After the Credits. Uh, we have Brendan back. We had you. We lost you for uh, two stop. weeks ago. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Uh, but welcome back. Welcome back. Um, anything new or crazy in the last couple of weeks? Uh, movie wise, movie wise, not really. Cool. Uh, as far as I can, I mean, I almost quit movies completely. Or uh, <laughs> <laughs> After the uh, the incident, the incident <laughs> that does not bear naming <laughs> no, or not, repeating, or repeating. Uh, yeah. But no, it's been a quite couple weeks, which is normal for I guess for what is it, April? Yeah, yeah, I right? think it's probably pretty normal. Yeah, I, you know, like what you got Doctor Strange coming out in two weeks. Yeah, just about uh, one week, maybe. Yeah, depending on when this episode comes out. Um, but uh, yeah, and so it maybe. People are like studios are just a little scared. Um, yeah, I mean we're we don't like it's a supposed sixth wave or whatever it is, and yeah. uh, people are who knows. Yeah. So, um, actually, speaking of which, uh, did you see that Sony pushed back a whole bunch of their um slate? No. Um, no, no. Yeah, Spider Verse. Uh, the what is it called? Into the Spider Verse. Uh, across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the first one's in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Across the Spider Verse Part One has been delayed. I think eight months. So it's supposed eight to, months. It's supposed to have come out this year, uh, in November, I believe, and now it's in July next year. It's, uh, we call that the Aquaman effect. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <it's>, um, <laughs> no, but Sony delayed a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And so I was kind of wondering, uh, like, the, who knows at this point? They they didn't announce anything specific, but I'm wondering if it has something to do with the COVID stuff, um, or yeah. the the blowback from the other thing. <laughs> what other thing? The, the oh, thing. <laughs> the other thing that shall not be named. Yeah. That that thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe I I doubt it. Honestly, no. Yeah, I, I think I, Spider Verse is so disconnected. Even just because it's an animated film, sure. people really uh, separate them in their minds. So good. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. So it could be a like part of me was wondering, oh, is this just a, they want to make sure the animation is good? You know, like yeah, they, yeah. they need a little more time. But the fact that they there was a whole bunch of movies, I think it was eight or nine that got impacted. That's crazy. Um, yeah, especially like so, moving moving the one movie they knew they were going to make money on this year. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it does make me wonder. Um, I've been I've talked to my wife a couple times about the fact that um, we have to be careful with movies coming out after the pandemic here in particular this was in reference to uh crimes of grindelwald uh because i you know i was telling her the fact is it is still easy for movie studios to to write something off as the reason these numbers are low is because of the pandemic yeah. so don't support like if, if you disagree with what jk rowling has done yeah. and you do not want to support her don't go to this film because even if it doesn't make a lot of money and it is, you know, below budget and stuff, um, it might still be yeah. worth greenlighting a sequel. Yeah, WB will just be like, well, it was the pandemic. Pandemic, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So they could still do that anyway, regardless of whether she buys a ticket. But I was telling her, like, you know, what other Harry Potter fans are like you and thinking the same way of, yeah. you know, uh, well, the n- numbers aren't that good. It's fine. I'll just I'll just see it once. You yeah. Know? The numbers are terrible though. They are not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'm I'm curious about that for sure. Yeah. Um. It, it it'll be interesting to see what uh pandemic era um uh, financing and and box office numbers what that affects and things sure sure out, sure you know yeah. Um, but yeah, they got pushed back, so it'll, it's pretty disappointing because I, you know, obviously I was stoked about yeah, the absolutely. New Spider-Verse film. So oh, that was the only Spider Verse related thing, like Sony related thing that I was excited for. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's too boy. bad. Um, the new Thor trailer, Thor: Lump and Thunder trailer dropped. What'd you think? Like, I know you're not a big MCU guy, so really, yeah. I'm asking you what you think <laughs> so that I can. Tell so you, you can what just trample all yeah, over. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was good. I thought it was good, it, but it, it 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 does give you a lot of similar vibes, uh, Ragnarok vibes, like sure, just turned up. Yep, uh, which is fine. 
yep. which is exactly in what made Ragnarok successful. So yeah, just lean into it. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, we talked about uh, trailers before, and it followed all the same things. They gave they gave the they gave away everything. Just I don't know about, if they gave away. Everything. It felt like it did. It felt like I mean, they didn't really give away the villain. Yep. But you know, they, at all? No, not all, at yeah. all. But they did give away the 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 Natalie Portman reveal. I thought, you know, I think people knew. They announced it. Yeah, they announced um, it. I kind of wish they just would have saved it. I didn't mind it personally. Yeah. I honestly think that wasn't a bad call. I think that's. Um, uh, I think in some ways what they wanted to do was confirm the fact that this is happening and get people used to that idea now. Yeah. Um, because the last thing they want is angry internet trolls who <laughs> didn't find out about this earlier and now are now yeah. upset when the movie actually comes out. Sure, like, sure, oh, sure, sure. Oh, sure. You know? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I think it's it's good to start. Yeah. Let's start that controversy now. If there's going to be issues online, let's sort of try and get ahead of it. Maybe they'll have blown out of steam by the time the movie's out. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, is all we've seen at this point is her costume, sure. which is very, like, clearly ripped straight from the straight comics. From the you know? So it's not like they're doing anything new nope. with how she's looking. Yep. And, and I think that's all good. Yeah. For me... I didn't have an issue with that. Yeah, it's not so much that I had an issue with them doing it. I, I just absolutely understand why they did it, and, and especially ending it on that note. Yeah, sure. Was was a good thing, but I was, uh, I wish I wish they would have given me that moment in the theaters, especially because it looks like it's very much mirrored when uh, the, it looks like almost a shot for shot uh, image of when Cap picks up the hammer in Avengers. Oh yeah, it does look very similar. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, even yeah, with yeah. the way Thor looks at her afterwards and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, it's, it's, I wish they would have given that to me in 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 the theater experience. Yeah, maybe saved <laughs> that shot for something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, but then again, it could be a situation of they created this shot for the trailer just sure. to mirror that, yeah. and then it's not actually and that's not in the, in movie. the movie. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If, if that's the case, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, because if it's not going to end up being a big reveal, great. Yeah. You know, then um, then give us to it the, to us now so that we can kind of make those illusions in our heads and yeah, you know, obviously yeah. discuss them and then in the movie do your Sure, thing. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the impression I got actually was that a lot of that trailer looks like it's happening in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Um, Probably. You know, like the, <laughs> the stuff with the Guardians, I don't expect he's going to be with them much uh, through the film. I think it's going to be a Thor film. Thank God. Um <laughs> Which uh, yeah, I, I like, I like the interaction. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Um, I, I think that uh, we have too much Guardians content. It's going to feel a little strange when we get Guardians three. I think next year and the Christmas special uh, and the Christmas special. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do think there's a cons- or potential concern about saturation, um, yeah. but. I, I liked the the interactions they had. Yeah. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Thor is it is it saturation though, or is it mm, getting the most out of it before it's over? I could be that. Could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if even when the Guardians trilogy kind of wraps up, that we get spinoff characters. So whether that's you know Drax continues doing things. Yeah. It and, sounds like he's done. Oh, is he? Yeah. It sounds like Batista's done. Sorry, that was just a random like, <laughs> pick. I, I just, but yeah. like, I would be really surprised if we had the whole team get retired at the end of Volume Three. Yeah, I imagine we're we're gonna end up making fucking Rocket and Groot movies till the end of time or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, um, Groot in particular, I think, would be fairly easy um, because uh, does Batista even do baby Groot stuff? Like, I I didn't know if that was you mean Vin Diesel. Oh, sorry, thank you, Ugh, Diesel. I yeah, believe that he Diesel? does. It is him. Yeah. So like. I don't think he has any issues doing that job. Um, so I think they'll, they could bring yeah. him back without too much of an sure. issue. Uh, and then just, yeah. you know, um, but the, the thing is too, that cosmic side of the MCU, there's still so much they can explore and so many characters they can introduce. Yeah. So maybe the uh, guardians three, we get some new characters in there and, um, and we can, it's kind of a facelift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We continue on with a new guardians team potentially. I don't sure. know. Um, it, it's not going to be the same as James Dunn. Like, and I assume he's done after this. I don't haven't heard that from him, but I can't imagine yeah, he's yeah. going to continue. It would so. take. A, I think it would take. A, I think if if he stayed within Marvel, he'd move on to something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I like those aspects. It looked like we get that tra- training montage at one point in there. I His think hat though, is amazing. Oh, yeah. well, the whole thing. I, but actually, I don't even know if I really saw what was on the hat. It says "Strongest Avenger." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, 
Yeah, no, his whole look. So, uh, but I, I think most of that's going to be first 10 minutes, which excites me because I, I would rather a trailer do that. Yeah. Where yeah they yeah, give yeah. us kind of those first 10 minutes and then we don't get much else. Right. You know? um, and I'm excited that if they lean into more of the Taika Waititi stuff, um, just because as much as they really did with Thor Ragnarok and they took a risk, um, part of me wonders if, you know, like what was left on the cutting room floor. Like, what didn't they let him do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, And now that he's proven himself with Ragnarok, what, if they gave the rings fully over to him, yeah. what what does this mean, you know? Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it looks pretty dope. Yeah, I'm, 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 tend to, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. As I usually am with the Marvel movies. Sure. And <laughs> uh, do you remember when that is? Is that November or is that the summer? Is it July? That's the summer one. It I is. Believe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I think it's, is it the Marvels that's the November one? Oh, you know what? It is the Marvels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, great nice. transition. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the Miss Marvel trailer? Uh, that's so tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and it's one of those ones where you, you especially for me, going into it, you, you have to try to separate the comics from, sure. from the stuff. Uh, but yeah. the departure from this is so... And I don't want to be that angry internet guy. And I'm not angry for it. I get it. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do and, and whatnot. But she just seems so different. She does. Um, uh, I, I I don't read a lot of comics. Yeah. I have read like the full Miss Marvel run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, both runs, I believe. I think I'm like fully caught up with all her solo stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I loved them. I adored them. Um, she is a great character. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny because you, you talk a little bit about um, uh, or we've talked about inclusion and how important it is that we get um diverse characters and um, oh god. I'm going to get through this up, I think. But she is Pakistani yeah. uh, and Muslim uh, and and a teenage girl. None of which relates to me specifically, but I found in a lot of ways she's one of the most relatable characters. Yeah. That if, for me personally, in the Marvel universe. Yeah, Marvel and that's, comics, the, that's the strength of the, the writer there. G. Willow Wilson does yeah. a phenomenal job of, of introducing her and, and, and making you care like right away. Well, and she's she's a nerd. She's a she's a she's book smart. She wants to impress her parents. Yeah. She loves superheroes. She loves video games. Like she, she seems so likable and someone that I could really get along with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in some ways, again, you know, I'm none of the things. Like I'm not Pakistani. I'm not a teenage <laughs> girl. I, but I still felt like, oh, that's something I literally went through. Yeah, yeah. When I was a teenager, you know, um, and. And I'm not quite seeing some of that quirky charm in the in the trailer, which, granted, it's just a trailer. Yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't really expect yeah. too if much they, of it. If that's the way they chose to cut it, yeah, that, that's that's cool. But she does feel a little bit more aloof in the trailers. A little yeah. bit, like the daydream stuff is a little bit is a bit strange because yeah. she, she's not quite that. Mm-hmm. At least not to that extent. Totally, but there it, there's like a weird diary of a wimpy kid feel going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fair yeah, yeah, yeah. That is quite strange to me. Uh, and if they want to liven it up and and quicken it, uh, quirk it up a little bit, I get it. But I just don't know if he needed it. Yeah. Um. And again, it's it's one trailer. We haven't been shown a lot, so I I really don't want to make this come across like this this show is gonna suck. Yeah. Um. So the quirkiness I am missing from this trailer. But that could still come. Yeah. Um, the thing that actually really worried me is her power set. Um, because it looks like, like in, in the comics, for those who don't know, she effectively has, I think they're, she literally calls them in big in powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're, she's like Mr. Fantastic. She stretches. She stretches arms and stuff, but then her, she can also literally grow in size. And so a lot of her fighting is stretching her arms and then making herself like have big fists yeah, and then yeah. punching people that way. Um, and so I think on some level, they decided to change it a little bit, I assume, because visually her powers are goofy and strange. Um, I also figured that I know we know they have the Fantastic Four now and that we're going to be getting a John Watts Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. So maybe they're just trying to separate it from Mr. Fantastic and his power set. Um, but it looks like they've completely strapped that. Uh, from what I see in the trailers, she looks like she has Panthers powers uh, more similar to Green Lantern. Yeah, it's like weird, like cosmic bands, which yeah. I, you know, cosmic bands exist in the Marvel universe. So whether or not that's going to be a thing that they put in the Marvels, because I know I think it's the second or the third Captain Marvel in the comics he has mega bands. Oh, okay. And he clashes them together, and that's how he changes it on Captain Marvel. Oh, cool. So there's there's stuff like that that they could be 
trying to integrate. Sure. But I kind of lament the loss of her quirky powers. Yeah. Because I think that if you you wouldn't have to over quirk the rest of it if her powers were weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that felt like such a big part of her character too. It was just like she, wanting to be a superhero so badly and getting weird powers to yeah, do it. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, you know. Um, so that worries me a bit. And it sucks because I remember when they, the trailer first came out, you sent me a quote from the, uh, or maybe? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, G, the G. Will Wilson quote. Yeah. And yeah. talking about how they didn't want the powers to come across as cosmic and they wanted the, you know, they wanted her to be different. Yeah. They went out of their way to, and they, they said that was the longest part of character conception was trying to not, not make the powers sparkly. Yeah. And then they just did it. And then they look pretty sparkly in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. And again, we've just seen the trailer. I I, I don't want to... But they look sparkly. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, and like I said, the, the thing that the Marvel Universe has done so well is they've kept... Even with changes, they've kept the core of the characters. Yeah, totally. Uh, and I, this is the first time I've been worried about it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, you know, the Shang-Chi... They totally changed up his power set. Yep. Um and but he needed to. I was gonna say that was a good choice because yeah. the comic sucks. Like he's, <laughs> he's not in a very compelling or interesting character sure. in the comics. Um, and so him in the MCU is far more interesting and compelling. Um, and they made those powers unique and dynamic. Yeah. Um, so I really appreciated that, and it's it's a step in the right direction. So I'm not saying that they have they can't make these changes. And, you know, and, and still deliver a, a fantastic film, a fantastic character, fantastic story. Um, but, like, I think this is one of the few characters where I would be a little far more against it. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, you know, again, which is why we're not shitting all over it right away. Yeah, it, absolutely. It is because it is a trailer and we'll, we'll see how it, is, how it is. But, yeah, and your comparison of the Green Lantern stuff only fuels my nightmares yeah, yeah oh, totally <laughs> it's tough too because i have a hard time talking about this show a little bit because i've seen quite a lot of backlash online about it oh yeah yeah and and a number of the comments are just i like i don't want to write people off and say they're you know racist or misogynistic or whatever but there, there's a number of the comments that seem fairly belittling and they're just like yes yeah, you know i'm, I'm was never going to watch this show anyway yeah, and i'm yeah. like Okay, but before you see the saw trailer, <laughs> you would decided you weren't going to. Yeah, so. no, I've, I've I've seen a little bit of it. Uh, not maybe so much about the trailer itself, but it, a lot of people writing it off before. Yeah, I think it's like, why is this? Why is this being? Why is this a show? The sales don't justify her being a character in the MCU, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know where you're getting those numbers from or whatever. Like, that. yeah, <laughs> totally, yeah, totally. Yeah. So that stuff is tough, and again, I have a hard time being sort of adding my voice to that a little bit where I'm a little concerned. Sure. Because the, some of the negativity has been, I think, unfair. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I guess just put my stamp on it as as cautious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, about it at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, that was really some of the bigger stuff. Uh, I uh, read a Neil Gaiman book this week. Nice. Uh, which I love him. Uh, yeah, he's great. He's great. Um, but I read uh, a view from the cheap seats, mm -hmm. which I, it's, it's a hard recommend. Like I, I basically anything that guy writes, uh, go ahead and read it, and it's a you, you'll get a slam dunk more mm -hmm. or less. Um, but this one's a little bit strange because it's, it's a collection of his essays and, and forewords in, in various books and stuff. So what I really liked about it is there's some cool stuff in there about he recommends other uh, authors basically. Yeah. Um, so he did forewords for various authors. Um, uh, pushing their work, and so then I was able to take those, some of those and go, oh, cool! So these are some other people I should maybe read. You know, cool. took it as recommendations. Then um, the other stuff was just finding out how much of his life has been in comics, and I, I don't think I quite realized that. I've read a number of his comics. Yeah, and honestly, always been kind of disappointed. Outside of Sandman, Sandman is amazing and a masterpiece. Sure, but you know, I read his Eternals stuff, and I read his uh, is it fourteen oh one or fourteen. 1602. 1602. Man, there's something in there. <laughs> um, and I wasn't floored with 1602. I found it was kind of boring, um, yeah. which is disappointing because, again, I love Gaiman as an author, uh, yeah. as a writer. That one, so. that one was definitely a victim of the hype train. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. We I had the store one that was coming out and Neil Gaiman doing Marvel work. And, and I, you know, I think it's Adam Kubert that does the art for it. Uh, so it was, you, sorry. it was a big, big deal. And by the time, like, issue three comes out, it's like nobody 
nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. Um, but I so I really liked View from the Cheap Seats. Um, uh, I always do audiobooks, so he narrates all of them too, and he's got yeah, a he's got great a great voice. voice. So yeah. uh, so that always kind of adds to the enjoyment. But there was a uh, story about Coraline um, where he talked about how hard it is to sometimes determine if he's writing a story for a, a, an, adult, an adult or a child or what the audience is. And if you've seen Coral, Coraline, it is like not a kid's movie. It shouldn't be. <laughs> it, that, it's, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Um, so I guess what he did when he was writing the book is uh, he, you know, literally just talked to his publisher about this and, uh, and said like, I don't know. Or I think his editor. Um, and, and she was like, well, how about this? I'll read it to my daughter's. And if they think it's too scary, then it will publish it as an adult book. Uh, and if they don't, if they're if they are enjoying it, we'll publish it as a kids book. And uh, and she reads it to them, comes back, and she goes, "It's a kids book." <laughs> and 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 she was like, "They didn't have any issues, you know. They weren't scared at all." And uh, I guess at the premiere of the film, oh, no. um, Neil was talking to like the the editor was there and and her daughters. Yeah. So Neil was talking to the daughters and he said, you know, you're actually the reason this is a kid's book um, because she checked if you were scared yeah. and if you weren't, you know. And the daughter says, uh, she's like, oh, I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I just knew that if I told mom that, she wouldn't let us finish. <laughs> so... A generation of children have been starved because of one kid's refusal <laughs> Amazing. To, to admit their feelings. So I thought that was great. That's hilarious. But that's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, I uh, this week was the release of the new Ed Brubaker Sean Phillips book. Oh, cool. Uh, Ed Brubaker is my favorite comic writer uh, of all time. Uh, he of Winter Soldier fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he basically created, when, like he did. Created, create yeah, he created yeah. that uh, that character and wrote that entire arc. Uh, but over the pandemic, they were releasing. Uh, Edward Baker and Sean Phillips have been working together for just about twenty years now. Oh, okay. they do my favorite comics work. They did Criminal, Incognito, Fatal, uh, The Fade Out, and so they do a whole bunch of these self-contained stories. Oh, cool. Uh, but over the pandemic, they were just like, well their work got stalled because the comic shut down for the first six months. Sure. Uh, so they're like, well, what are we going to do? Uh, so Brubaker, who is rooted in uh, noir and, and detective stories, he ends up creating Ethan Reckless. And it's a character where they put out these single-serving graphic novels, hard uh, hardcovers, and it's just a, a story about Ethan Reckless, oh, cool. who is a private detective who lives out of a movie theater in San Diego. Oh, sweet. It's awesome. And it's based in the 80s and stuff like that. Uh, so it's all the same characters, but the stories have nothing to do with one another. Oh, nice. They're so they just, they just one off, just like pulp novels uh, nice. were in the 50s. So that was the thing. So this, over the pandemic, this will be the fifth book they've released. Oh, Which wow. is nuts for output for comics. Well, and so are we talking in terms of length? Is it like a comic issue, like the twenty five no, page or we're, whatever? We're talking like uh, like a graphic novel, probably four to five issues worth. So about a hundred oh, okay. pages, a hundred pages wow. uh, of story. And so, Ghost and You was the newest release that came out this week, and it was awesome. Uh, so you're done it. You're through. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Day one, that's the thing that I did, uh, <laughs> and because yeah, they're just great. Uh, oh wow. And, I can't re recommend them. They're called, uh, it's the Reckless series. There's five of them now. Uh, and if you like those, then go back and read everything they've done. Criminal might be my favorite comic book series of all time now. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So wow. they're they're great. Edry Baker, Sean Phillips. Wow. Um, so is it, like, what's it being published under? Is it their own independent label? No, or? they publish they published through Image. Oh, Image. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So they used to publish, so they got their start under Marvel's Icon imprint. Right. Which was not very, used very much. It was like creator-owned stuff that Marvel would print under the Icon banner as opposed to being an, uh, an actual Marvel comic. Right. So Brian Michael Bendis did a bunch of creator-owned stuff there, and so did Ed Brubaker. But then they kind of shut, like, shuttered that. Yeah. And then Brubaker ended up going to Hollywood. Bendis went to D.C., so they've all either gone back to Image. I think Bendis just signed a deal with Dark Horse. Oh, okay. To do all of his creator own stuff again, but uh, but Brubaker's been with Image since the late two thousands. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Printing fair his stuff. So yeah. Well, sweet man. Yeah, that sounds pretty dope. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I'll have to take a look. Uh, Ed Reckless, huh? No. Ed Brubaker, Ethan Reckless, but Ethan they're just Reckless. called. It's just like a Reckless book. Is what it's just oh, right on okay. the thing, and a little later they look great. 
Man, I'm falling apart here. It's all good. Falling apart. <laughs> um, sweet, dude. Yeah. Anything else uh, you want to talk about in this last? I don't years? know. I've been playing a lot of MLB The Show. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, just baseball season, and I just park my ass on a couch and just play a bunch of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but I love it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I uh, I beat Elden Ring. There you go. Finally. Uh, uh, I think I have 160 speaking, hours. Speaking of parking your ass on a couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty sweet. It, it's, it's a pretty dope game. The the plot, and I might get flamed for this, but the plot is nonsensical as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Um, and I think what I keep hearing from people is you basically, in order to make sense of all the lore and that, you basically have to read like all the item descriptions and everything you pick up. Well, that's not happening for you. And you like put the pieces all together. Um, and and I, you know, it's my first uh, from software game, so it's yeah. my first Dark Souls, yeah, universe. Uh, and um, I typically I suck at video games. Like I, I play a lot, um, but I am not good enough to play a Dark Souls type game. Sure. My understanding is this is the easiest one by far. Which is funny because this is the only one of those I haven't played. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh so but like I still quite enjoyed it. I thought it was challenging but interesting. But there's a few things that that fans of the series really enjoy, like the fact that there's no quest markers or anything. Yeah, yeah. But that stuff drove me nuts. Like I don't <laughs> I don't need there to be a marker. Like I but I, I at least wanted to know what the quests were because there were situations where someone sort of talks about something vaguely and i wasn't sure if it was just is that part of the lore or is that is that supposed to be leading me towards a quest so i found i was online a lot to find out you know what i could do in the game (laughs) literally just not knowing yeah yeah and even then missed quest after quest and like would get to a point where i'm like oh i guess i've i've literally gone too far for that to be able to access that again so it's done it's done (laughs) um so there was a whole bunch of stuff in my inventory uh, by the end of the game that I'm like, oh, what I wonder what this ever was. So I look it up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I can't use that. <laughs> you know, not a thing. Okay, cool. Um, so some of those things bug me or, or not bug me, but just it's a very specific type of game. You have to be ready to play it that way. You have to be, yeah. you know, but um, but yeah. But overall, it's a good experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would be amazed if it doesn't win Game of the Year awards like crazy. Yeah. Like it's it deserves it. I don't know how much of it is true, but they were saying because of the success of it, they'll probably not make another Dark Souls game. They will just continue to make this style of game instead. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, that that wouldn't totally surprise me. Uh, I know that some people were concerned about stuff like that, where they might start, you know, given that they have a big amount of success, might start leading into a little bit more casual stuff. Because, yeah. again, Elden Ring is probably the most casual friendly of the Soulsborne games. Yep. So... You know, uh, do they do that for a little bit more appeal? I don't know. Um, I, I've i always been impressed with Nintendo's uh, habit, and even uh, Xbox has been doing it like crazy too, to be inclusive. And so they, they provide options that make gaming a little bit more available. And this is not a step in that direction. And I don't know if it needs to be. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if they, if they put some stuff out that, maybe starts appealing to a little bit more of a, of a mass market audience Fair and that it'd be rough. I think they're going to lose fans if they do it. But um, I also, that being said though, they have consistently put out stuff that are fan pleasers, you know? So why would they stop now? Who knows? Cool, man. Um, uh, just to give you a little bit of lip service again, though, MLB, <laughs> well, you're, are you playing the new one? I assume you're playing whatever it, the current year is. 22. Oh, it is 22. I'm going to be the show 22. Yeah, I am playing the new one. Yeah, yeah. It's and a, having a good time, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. I, I mean, I, I, like, I, I'm also not good at video games. Sure. And, and I used to be better at sports games, but with age and I, I've, I have nerve damage in my hands. Yeah. Uh, so things that require timing and precision. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the thing that I I know the most is sports games. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, fair. So there are times when it's just you know uh, it's just swearing. Oh, that'll it's happen. Just swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I, I'm, in, I'm I'm having a good time with it uh, through through all the frustrations. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll probably check in next week. Uh. Or sorry, two weeks. Uh. 
let us know if we should shut up about video games or shut up about books or if you guys are liking that uh, side of the conversation and you know. ask us a whole bunch of stupid questions. Let's go. That too. Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's do some fan mail. You know? <laughs> it's yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, time. Yeah, totally. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll touch base again in two weeks.